Welcome along to another edition of the Sky Sports F1 quiz and what a lineup we have today. 15 Grand Prix wins between them. Well, 15 Grand Prix wins for Jenston Button and joining him, Karun Chandok and Simon Lazerby as well. Gentlemen, welcome along. Welcome along. Hello. Uh, what time is it where you are, JB? Six in the morning. Yeah, just what you want. He's got a coffee at six o'clock in the morning. Beautiful. <laughs> he's, only, yeah. he's only human, to be fair. Um, it's going to be really embarrassing for you, though, if Jensen wins when he's half asleep, isn't it? No, because I'm going to throw this because I don't want to make the final. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. Look at you. Competitive as ever. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Jamie, he knows there's an F1 round coming up, so he's yeah, claiming yeah, yeah, to yeah, throw yeah. it before that round has taken place. Um, let's get on with our first round, though, which is the specialist subject. And Karun, we'll start with you, if that's okay. Because surprisingly, you've gone for 1990s F1. That's I mean, it's shocking, isn't it, really, that I've chosen that? Simon looks positively shocked. Well, obviously, it's going to be that. Like, Scrapbook Boy was always going to go with uh, something from F1. So, you know, to minimise damage, he's going to go for as many F1 rounds as possible. <laughs> obviously, because <laughs> I'm hopeless on general knowledge or music, as Crofty knows. Right. Well, the uh, hits of One Direction coming your way later. In the meantime, question number one, Karun. And we'll throw this open if you guys don't know the answers for your own specialist subjects. At Phoenix, Karun hosted the first Grand Prix of the 1990s. Who was the winner? Uh, Edmund Senna. Edmund Senna is correct for one point. He's good. He's well, good. Well, I'm scared. I am scared now as well. I'm scared well, myself. And I've got the I answer. mean... I didn't even know that Phoenix had a Grand Prix. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big race with the lazy. It was a mega race. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Anyway. Stop it. No one likes a SWAT this early, all right? Um, <laughs> who were the only two drivers to compete in all 10 seasons in the 1990s? Uh, in all 10 seasons. So not the complete season, but some races in it. To compete in all 10 seasons in the 1990s. Oh, that's a tricky one. Yeah. Uh, Johnny. Johnny is correct. Johnny's correct. Uh, probably, uh, it wasn't Damon, because he did 92 Brabham. You're right, it wasn't Damon, but you don't get a point for that. No, I don't get that. Uh, I'm buzzing. Yeah. Uh, on, buzzing. I'm, 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 John Lacey. Oh. Well done. How did you that is, know that? Wow. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Very good, Ginger. Do you want to quit good. while you're ahead, Blazers? Sorry? Do you want to quit while you're ahead? Why would I cheat? There's no point in cheating. <laughs> and you'll win. <laughs> Who said anything about <laughs> cheating? Right. Next question, Karu. Which driver was the last driver to score points for the Tyrrell team? Was it Jos Verstappen? Uh, Tora Takaji or Mika Salo? Uh, Mika Salo? It was when he finished fifth in the 97 Monaco Grand Prix. Three drivers wow. won the first Grand Prix during the 1995 season. Can you name two of them? Three guys had their first Grand Prix in 95. Uh, probably somebody in Simtech, Scatterella or something like that. Sorry, Simtech? How many races did Simtech win? Oh, win races in 95, you said. So I didn't hear the question. As in three drivers won their first Grand Prix. In 95, oh, right. well, Johnny did. Johnny yeah. won 95. Uh, a lazy won his first race in 95 as well. So that's two yep. out of three, you said, wasn't it? That's right. And uh, uh, do you know the others? Cool time. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> where, where are you getting these answers from? I'm not. I'm not. But, you know, it's his first, you know, it's first one. Uh, yeah. where, where was it, Simon? Know, think... why, why do you think I'm cheating? Well, where uh, was it then, well, Ginger? Go on. You, you don't know anything. I don't know where it was, but <laughs> it's in 95. Okay. But anyway, it's probably only one or two. So there you go. Then, I think Jensen summed it up with the phrase, because you don't know anything, you know? <laughs> 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 and it's more of it. He's known you the least longest, and it's already gotten on. Lovely. <laughs> Question number five Michael Schumacher's first win came at Spa in 1992. Who did he beat into second place? Uh, Mantle. <laughs> Is the correct answer. Four out of five, Karun, for your specialist subject. Very good. Jensen Button. Um, How's it going? Not bad. How's it going for you? Baby. Good. Baby. I, I mean, 
it's the only thing I, I was thinking. I was asked a specialist subject, and I was like, well, I could do triathlon, I could do this and that. I was like, it's just going to be, it's going to sound boring. Let's do babies. <laughs> babies are fun. And that's basically all I've been doing for the last four months. Well, in which case, then, on that subject, here is question number one. On average, how many nappies or diapers, as you probably call them these days, will a child go through from birth to being potty trained? Is it uh, between five and seven thousand, between seven and nine thousand, or between nine and eleven thousand? I mean, really? Really? <laughs> it's what, it's what it... you're doing a lot of at the moment, so I thought you might know. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of nappies. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. We I mean, use those um, recyclable ones as well, so he's, he's, we've had to wash it 3,000 times already, I guess. Oh, God. Really? <laughs> not really. Not really. <laughs> um, um, I, reckon it, I reckon it's the middle one, so 7,000 upwards. Seven to nine thousand is the correct answer. Look at that! Come on, noses, nappies. Uh, which of the following is not a natural reflex for a baby? Sucking a thumb, fanning out toes when touched, or rolling over? Fanning out toes when touched. No. Uh, what? Uh, rolling over. Babies don't start what? to do that until about four months old. You didn't, you didn't give a time. <laughs> <laughs> they start rolling over. <laughs> just, just said that it's not a natural reflex. It's something they learn as time goes on. They learn oh, okay. to roll over. Particularly I useful. failed. Yeah, particularly useful when they turn 18. Right, a baby is born <laughs> around the world. How often? Is it every three seconds, every 15 seconds, or every 30 seconds? Three seconds. It's the correct answer. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Three seconds around the world. Wow. You think that baby be getting tired. Um, which sense is developed first in newborn babies? Oh, I thought you were going to give me options. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it, is it hearing, seeing, touching, smelling, or tasting? <laughs> smelling. Ooh, I'm going to open that out because uh, that's wrong. Hearing. Sorry, Corinne? Hearing? Yeah, I know the answer. I just couldn't resist that one. Sorry. Uh, it is hearing. <laughs> oh, <Yay>! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's definitely not seeing. Oh, damn. <laughs> right. And finally, the average size of a newborn baby's stomach is the same as a what? A cherry, an egg, or a raisin? Obviously, in my case, it was a potato. <laughs> <laughs> a cherry. An egg or a raisin? I mean, it sounds wrong that it's smaller than an egg. How is yeah. that possible? I mean, because they, they have, you, you, f you fill them with a few ounces of milk, but I'm going to say cherry. And a cherry, ladies and gentlemen, would be the correct answer. Yeah. yeah. Right. Good guesswork. Good, yeah. good, good work. Yeah. <laughs> he knows his stuff on babies. <clears throat> But the question, Simon Lazenby, we asked now is how well do you know your specialist subject of furry mammals? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> it's the only reason I picked this is because I did a quiz the other day and um, I did one. I did a round. Instead of University Challenge, it was University Marmot. And uh, <laughs> the most anyone got was three. So I, I reckon, I, you know, I'm going to give it a go. Okay, furry mammals. Here we go then. Which furry mammals have prehensile tails? Shrews, beavers, or monkeys? <laughs> beavers. <laughs> I'll open that out. Oh, come on. It's You're not looking too furry. Have you had a shave today? Yeah. It's monkeys. It's monkeys, isn't it? Serious back on the planet. Why, why are you still answering? You've already oh, got all so, you know, the else. No, it's monkeys or shrews. Monkeys. <laughs> monkeys. <laughs> JB says yeah. monkeys. Jen, got, yeah. Jensen says monkeys, and that's the correct answer. Oh, so yeah. That one. <laughs> Bloody did that in biology as well. <laughs> right. Don't shout out because it is open to the others if you get it okay, wrong. Yeah. Sure. Which small mammal that resembles a weasel lives in southern Asia and is known as a snake killer? <laughs> one goose. <laughs> it's the correct answer. <laughs> Boom. Ah. What? One goose. <laughs> You deserve to win the whole thing with that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Told you you're going to get one anyway, yeah. Let's see how we um, It is the tallest North American quadruped 
and the largest member of the deer family. What kind of animal is it? Moose. What? Oh, what, sorry? A moose or a caribou. A moose is the correct answer. <laughs> Oh, very animals, very animals. Um, where would you see a manatee in the Florida estuaries, the Pacific Northwest coastlands, or the Arizona deserts? Well, it's in the sea, so wherever that is, whatever you said. <laughs> well, the it's like you, you're the you're obviously it's that furry animal. I mean, the sea manatee. We've always called you the sea manatee, so because of your sort of yes. kind of noises. <laughs> So what is, so yeah, so what did you say, what are the options again? Florida estuaries, Pacific Northwest coastlands or the Arizona deserts. Is that coastlands or coast, you know, off the coast of the Pacific Northwest? Coast oh, for God's sakes, that, man. It's off the coast of the Pacific Northwest. No, it's not. It's in the in Florida the, estuaries. Oh, okay, well, okay, fine. I'm I'm sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I should have opened that up, but I really wanted Florida to get Florida estuaries, can I? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's the correct answer, Karun. Well thanks, done. thanks, Crofty, thanks. But you're in the lead, so you don't get a push. Oh. <laughs> um, and yet, to come, and I want to make this interesting for anyone watching. Um, true or false, a donkey can see all four of its feet. True or false? This is the good question. Now, I mean, it's, uh, it, it going, sounds totally it's impossible, so it it's going to be true, isn't it? Lasers? I don't know about his bending of its neck. I'm thinking. It's standing there. <laughs> now, no pressure. But uh, in, uh, in, in the first episode, we asked Damon Hill four true or false questions, or four 50-50 answer questions. He got all four wrong. <laughs> it sounds like I should be saying true, so I'm going to say false. Uh, anyone else? I think it's true. I think uh, it's true. That is the correct answer, Jensen. Well done. <laughs> what, true? <laughs> it's true. I had like four for that one. Just eye. <laughs> see, you and Damon Hill have something in common now. A donkey's <laughs> eyes are positioned so they're able to see all four of their feet, which helps them climbing hilly and mountainous terrain all around the world. There you go. Uh, and on that bombshell, Simon Lazerby with three points, narrowly trails Karuna and Jensen with five points each. Well done. Congratulations. End of the first round. Hold on. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I got two of mine right and I picked up on two correct ones. So that yeah, makes four. Not yeah, but one, one of which I gave you a point for, one of which I didn't for some strange reason. I don't know. So it's four. So Lasers is the donkey yeah, of that round. That Lasers yeah, is four. very much the donkey of that round. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on to the Formula One round. And I know that you've all been waiting for this, Karun Chandok. Look, look at the way, Jensen, he just takes a little sip of his drink there. It's... it's Honestly, it's like Wang on University Challenge. Now is my... I'll oh, just get on with it, all right? <laughs> you know. Sip of the water, here we go. Three wins for Max Verstappen in 2019. What was the only race he won from pole? Uh, Shout your name out when you know... Brazil. Austria. Brazil. Shout your name out when you know the answer. Jensen. Jensen. Austria. Wrong. No, no. Brazil. Karun, Brazil. Shout your name out, then I'll. Karun, Brazil. No. <laughs> Lasers, you had so many opportunities there. Oh, right. still got it right. Brazil. Yeah, right, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like that, I was ready to go. <laughs> this season, uh, this season, uh, season even, should see two Canadians start an F1 season for the first time. Where was the Canadian Grand Prix first held? Uh, uh, Troy, Troy Revoir? Is that how you pronounce it? You have to say Troy Revoir. Troy Revoir. Say your Jensen name. Troy Revoir. Oh, Karun. Oh, tw <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, Karun. Now you can answer. Oh, uh, the Troy Revoir circuit? No, is the no. wrong answer. Is, no. it's not, is it? No, it's not one that Stroll's got all his stuff at. Um, say your name, answer the question. Of course. Okay, can I go again or not? Simon Moore something. Right, say your name, answer the question. <laughs> Simon Moore and it's, and it's Moore something. No, it's not. <laughs> but good, good answer, but it's not Moore. Moose Moore. Park. Say that again, uh, gents. No, it's not. It's not, mate. I don't know where it is. I haven't got a clue. Uh, Moose Park. Moss, 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 Moss,
Moscow yeah, in 1967. Right, this year is the 70th anniversary of the F1 Drivers' Championship. What year did the Constructors' Championship start? And who were the champions? Uh, Simon. Simon. 1958. Yeah. Van Wall. <laughs> it's the correct answer. Well looked up. I didn't, wow. look up. I didn't look that up. I just <laughs> did, did, some, did some swatting. Right. Quick impression. <laughs> Simon Lazenby. I didn't look that up. No, I was looking anyway. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at this great photo behind me. Who is that, Simon? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. How many cars did you sell? <laughs> is it signed to you, Simon? Is it say with love? Simon, the best wishes, David Croft, pre Sky F1. Yeah, it is. that is me. David Brent is. That is me, mid nineties, and that 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 is you now facing uh, me, looking through all my old photos to find one of you. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. No, uh, Johnny's got the ones I really want to see, but there you go. Um, let's carry on <laughs> with our next question. When we resume racing once more, how many more wins does Lewis Hamilton need to equal Michael Schumacher's record of 91 victories? Karun, nine. nine. Three. Karun, wrong. Jensen, six. Jensen, wrong. Simon, ten. Hang on, he's, got, he's got to look it up. <laughs> got to see, it's not in that book. <laughs> Seven. Oh, so close. It was. Which record did Rubens Barrichello break at the 2008 Turkish Grand Prix? Oh, Jensen. Oh, Simon. Jensen. Most Grand Prix competed in. That's right. Uh, that was his 257th race. Uh, finished on 322, which Kimi Raikkonen could break sometime this season if we get going. Uh, which rule was brought in for the final race of the 2014 season and never used again? Oh, Karu. Karun. The double points. Double points is correct. Oh. <laughs> Which driver took the first victory for Williams in Formula One? Karun. Simon. No, it wasn't you, Karun. <laughs> <laughs> Karun, go for it. <laughs> oh, go on, Simon. Go on. You've said it. Go on. I want to see. I have said it. I was. You said your name. So go on. Oh, Alan Jones. No. No. Should have been. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 it's close. It could have been Alan Jones. He was racing for Williams that day. Karun. Uh, Regazzoni. It was Clay Regazzoni. Well done. Wow. In what year, there's only one person I'm looking to to know the answer to this, did Renault <laughs> become the first team to win a Grand Prix with a turbocharged engine? Uh, Jensen. Jensen. Nin 1980. Oh, Simon. Simon. 81. Simon. 982. 79. Oh, oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so close. So close, guys. So close. So close. Um, where did Damon Hill make his first Grand Prix start? I don't know. Simon. Groom. Um, Silverstone. It was Silverstone. Oh. In what Grand Prix <laughs> did a Colin Chapman Lotus last take victory and who took the win? Karun, Simon. <laughs> Sorry, I'm <laughs> nervous. Uh, I'm gonna. Simon, uh, Austria with Elio yeah. De Angelis. It was Austria, Elio De Angelis. I'm giving you 182. What? Who are we playing with here? This is this is. <laughs> He's not a human. <laughs> not. He is Karun Chandok, Wonder Brain. After that round, this you know time you can't even abuse him. Because it'll go out. Imagine if you should get in real life if this wasn't going out. This is it clever. Uh, Lasers, you do now have four points. Uh, Jensen, you have six points. Uh, Karun, ten points so far. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Which brings us on to our next round. How well do you know your Sky Sports teammates? Important to know your teammates. And how well do you know the people you work with on TV? <coughs> Let's start off with some questions about Jensen Button to be answered by Karun Chandler. Oh, well, this is easy. If well, it's about motor racing, he's going to know them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a well, I thought we had a, we had a bum deal with this, with this draw. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> Get rid of him. <laughs> but he, he should have emailed me back with lots of embarrassing facts that he wouldn't have known you. Know. So then we'd have been okay. Yeah, should have. Um, Jensen Button was born in what year, Karun? Uh, 1980. 
See, one? Yeah, we see. Well, we see. Pick up, pick up, pick up. 1980. I, he said 1981. No, he said 80. 80. No, 1980. He said, you said 1981. No, no, 80. I'm going with 80 because you were 20 when you started F1, you weren't you? He said 81. No, 80. 79. 79. 1980. 1980. I'm sticking with 80. It's definitely 1980. Is it, JP? It is, isn't it? Uh, oh, can you, can, uh, you can only have this answer if you can tell me what my birthday is. Oh, this is a hard one. Simon, do you know? No, why Karun knows. Because <laughs> we have the same birthday. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, 19th birthday? of January. We're both the same birthday. Oh, uh, yeah. Another one loaded. This quiz is a, a fast. <laughs> <laughs> it was all randomly drawn, I'm afraid. And Karun, Jensen began his karting career at where? The Clay Pigeon Raceway, the Double Barrel ra Raceway, or the Shotgun Raceway? Wow, great names. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess clay pigeon. Oh, it's a good guess as well. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Although, she, oh wow. Where, where is? I Jen thought shotgun raceway sounded quite American, and that wasn't one you're gonna have in Somerset. Anyway. Where is the clay pigeon raceway, JB? It's near Yeovil. <laughs> you. <laughs> it's nearly over, my darling. I used to go there all the time, my go kart. That's right, my darling. Um, yeah. In what year did Jensen win the Autosport Young Driver of the Year award? Nineteen ninety-eight. <laughs> I think Kieran might have done his homework. <laughs> Is that right? Is that right? <laughs> what? what was it? Oh. Wow. It was. Who did you beat, JB? Who was, uh, who was in the final with you? Uh, no one. That's why I won. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt Davis, do you remember him? Yeah. Uh, Doug okay. Bell. You probably wouldn't know Doug Bell. Um, and loads of other drivers. I can't remember. <laughs> they, those were the two. Big, big, they, I mean, Matt was the biggest competition. Yeah. He was proper fast in an F3 car. 1998. Right. This, this is now getting... So within the realms of, of JB uh, applying for a restraining order to keep you away. <laughs> proper, proper stalker territory, this is. Um, so what happened to Jensen's Honda at the end of the Brazilian Grand Prix in 2008? The cash file. <laughs> <laughs> didn't he say something about just let it burn? As he walk on. Right. <laughs> what races are you doing? Because I'm not doing them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get him away from me. And, <laughs> and for a full house, Kirumble, uh, Jensen has the Japanese word Ichiban written on his crash helmet. What does it mean? I don't want to say. Something like, <laughs> I don't know, warrior or something? I don't know. I, I don't know. He's warrior. Deliberately saying that. <laughs> yeah. he, he is, isn't he? He knows. He so knows that one. Uh, Lasers, what would you say? His first girlfriend, probably. <laughs> he, he went out with a girl called Ichi Ban. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it's not a story I've ever heard. What does Ichi Ban mean, Jamie? Number one. <laughs> does it? Oh, oh like, like first... Ichi Biru when we order one beer at the bar. If you ain't first, you're last. <laughs> Uh, Karun Channel, four out of five on Jensen Button, and a serious, serious uh, need to keep you two away from each other in the future, <laughs> just well. for JB's safety. It's as simple as that. Right, La uh, Jensen, how well do you know Simon Lazenby? <laughs> this, this might not be as much about motor racing. <laughs> as previous, this, this could be really tricky and really embarrassing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lazers, I do love don't you. Don't worry, don't worry, just, just, just say it as it is. <laughs> and but Paul, also we'll edit it. Born to be on the big stage, at the age of five, Simon played the lead role in the school production of what? Joseph and Mary have a baby in Bethlehem, Oliver Twist, or the Gingerbread Man? <laughs> I mean, I wish it was the Gingerbread Man, but it obviously wasn't. Um, he should have. Um, <laughs> sorry, what, was the, uh, what were the other two <laughs> options? Joseph and Mary have a baby in Bethlehem, Oliver Twist or the Gingerbread Man? 
Uh, it's going to be Oliver Twist. <laughs> I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen. Peter, can I have a Who have you got? It wasn't. Okay, Gingerbread Man. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. It was. was. I had to hop out of Novel and sing Run Run As Fast You Can, Can't Catch Me. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Anyway. Oh, that's it was just it was too obvious. <laughs> that's too amazing. Obvious, is, it, is there a photo of this? No, I don't think so. What no, was the name of the school? Um, Windleston Primary. Windleston Primary. If anybody has photos, we'll pay good money for them. Um, we seriously, we'll splash the budget on that. We'd all like to see those. Um, <laughs> prefects turned up for duty the day that Simon, deputy head boy of the school, was in charge. Was it uh, naught, five, or ten? What? I mean, I, I mean, I, to know these questions. I thought it was supposed to be random facts that you could, you could do. <laughs> I but can't Google that you, one. That's why I give you a multiple choice. Look, look at him, JB. How many, pre how many Zero. <laughs> Zero is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sacked. <laughs> Sacked. Oh. Um, Simon, big musical fan, as we know. Um, when he wasn't in the Gingerbread Man, he was watching concerts. Once ruptured his medial ligament watching which live music act? Was it Britney Spears, Led Zeppelin, <laughs> or Dead Mouse? Oh, hang on a second. He he ruptured what? His medial ligament watching. So he was dancing. Yes. Yeah, I was going too hard. I was getting, it was definitely uh, Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see you getting up, getting up in the club with Britney Spears. <laughs> he strikes me more of a Tay Tay man myself, but yeah. um, was it Britney Spears? It wasn't. It was uh, the last ever Zeppelin concert, baby. God knows how I got tickets. But the yeah. last ever. Yeah. Yeah, wow. it was. Yeah, lucky Hope boy. You. Yeah. You yeah. well. oh, there you go. I saw Rob. I saw Robert Plant uh, two years ago, which is pretty awesome, in a, awesome. In a festival here in uh, in LA, which is pretty great. But yeah, I've never seen Led Zeppelin. Still got fabulous hair. He is. He, is he has got fabulous hair. And uh, and a very nice man as well, uh, Robert Plant. Even you though know? Mm. Did you meet? Sorry. <laughs> well, I tell you where I met him. I met him once when I went to a, uh, a premiere of a Led Zeppelin uh, music DVD they brought out many years ago, and I ran in late and ran straight into him. And uh, Jimmy Page came onto the radio sh uh, station a few days later, and I met him as well. Really? That's your question. Oh. Yeah, one of those to sign for him. Uh, I, I, did actually, <laughs> I looked different then. I would shaved off the goatee for a while. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Simon graduated from Durham University, but with which degree? Was it natural sciences, economics, or natural sciences? Natural sciences. Yes, Jensen. I mean, it's lovely that you go on right. Thank you. Thank you for that. It's all right. What do you mean go on right? I got what three right now. Yes. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I just know a lot about you. Sure, sure. Natural sciences. How yeah. exciting. Thanks. Uh, that's why I should have known more about furry mammals, but. Well, you were, and the reason why is because you were talking about biology earlier on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were talking about sciences, and, and you know, that's, that's why I got it. Well done, JB. Sorry. Thank I, you very I was, much. I'm still staggered that he actually got the degree. Was it a first? No. Two one? Yeah. Just about. I, I narrowly called the drinking degree. It was the Desmond Tutu, they called it, wasn't it? The Tutu. <laughs> 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 Uh, right, uh, we all watched JB and laughed as a couple of years ago Johnny launched a pinata bat straight into Simon's nether region for a television feature. But as a child, lasers could have suffered even greater trauma in that area after doing what? Uh, as he impaled on a railing after a bike accident, did he slide down a greenhouse roof onto a shard of glass, or did he fall onto an upturned garden rake? I mean, they all sound horrific. Yeah. Mm. And likely as well. That's Did the, he do all three? <laughs> <laughs> the, the second one, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have his nether region anymore, so not that one. Uh, the first it, one. It, it might have grazed it a bit. The first one. Ah. Uh, was he impaled on a railing after a bike accident? Lasers, what was the answer? Was actually, I thought it would be a good idea to slide down a greenhouse roof. <laughs> and uh, I don't know why I thought that it would take my weight, but it didn't. And the shot <laughs> went pretty much... So you don't have your bits how, anymore. How can I say this again without it, you know, without it being bleeped? But yeah, it nearly cut quite a lot off. 
<gasps> no. Did you have to have any stitches? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. buddy. No, it's okay, mate. It's okay. But it was very early to, you know, have that kind of trauma in that sort of area. So <laughs> <laughs> That's when you just about found it and know what to do with it. No, but it's, it's, all, it's all right. It's all right. Thank you. Oh, I love that. I love that that story's in in the public domain. Yeah, I am too. Maybe we'll <laughs> cut that one out. Uh, we'll, we'll carry this one on for a few seasons to come. Yeah, kids, please don't try this at home. Um, not at all. So, lasers. How well yeah. do you look her in Chandok? You ready for this? Okay. Yeah. At the age of twenty-four, uh, Karun was persuaded by Bruno Senna to start doing what? Uh, eating meat, meditating in the morning to the chance of the Maharishi Yogi. Or shaving his legs before heading off on a cycle training run to help with the drag. Oh God! You see, I was going to say shaving his eyebrows, but that um, <laughs> no. What can we go? Oh. That didn't come until he was twenty-eight. <sighs> it's going to be wrong. It's to, if it's the hair one, I'll be gutted. But I'll go with uh, I'll go with the second one because it sounds so implausible. Meditating in the mornings and the chance of the Maharishi. <laughs> Jensen? I think shaving legs. Karun? Uh, no, eating meat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. This is true. It was a barbecue in the uh, car park of the Paul Ricard. Well, not car park, where the motorhomes are parked at Paul Ricard. Wow. Shoved a burger in my face. Wow. What, why, why, why are we a vegetarian again? Does this go back to the 16-year-old passport photo? <laughs> well, no, I was just a vegetarian before. Okay. Forever. Before, yeah. right, okay. and, and, and uh, do you still eat meat to this day? Uh, I do. My uh, yeah. There you go. Do you still shave your legs? <laughs> uh, I don't. That only happened once, <laughs> and that was also because that was also <laughs> actually because uh, because of Bruno Senna. Yeah, it was a bet though. You could make it. You could make us a scarf. <laughs> you mean a jacket or a coat? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, has been having issues during lockdown, but let's move on. Uh, which track? Did Karun drive the first ever laps of in an F1 car? Was it Mokpo, Sochi, or the Bud International Circuit? The Bud International Circuit, surely. Stop wrong. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you and your dad were part of bringing the whole thing to India. Nope. Yeah, but I didn't drive the first lap. I designed okay, I well, design. that. You know, that, that's a trick question. Unfair was, again. Well, what was it, <laughs> it was Mokpo. <laughs> It was wow. not, oh. And Neil Yarney drove the first uh, lap at the BIC uh, for, uh, for Red Bull. Uh, which car was Karun driving on the roads uh, when he drove in his first British Grand Prix in 2010? So, you know, he turns up in the car park. Uh, he's got his own car parking space at Silverstone with all the other F1 drivers for the first time. Which car was he driving? Was yes, it a brand new Audi A8? Did he hire a Bentley Continental? Or was it a second-hand Volkswagen Passat? Second-hand Volkswagen Passat. <laughs> 9,000 9, pounds, that. <laughs> That's a lot. Well, yeah, it is. I saw you it was, yeah. You still got it? No, I, I sold it to one of the mechanics, actually, at the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> was it diesel? Yeah, it was. Is that because it was I don't know got it. Because was it then it was a Karun like Chandler Chandler. special edition then. He <laughs> signed it and made a couple of grand out of it. But. Uh, true or false, there is a small but perfectly welcoming Indian restaurant in Brackley that has a selection on the menu named after Karun. <laughs> I mean... True? Wait, wait, I'll give you a... There's a potential for a bonus here. Okay. And it has it has a nan named yeah. after another member of the Sky F1 team. It's true, it does. Who is it? Is it? No, it is too. Um, Davidson. I tried to help him. You did try to help him. You get oh, a point for the Karun Chandok special menu, uh, which is delicious, but uh, you missed out on the crofty nan. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, I, does I anyone order it? Who would eat it? Yeah. Like Crofty does. It's, it's a garlic <laughs> naan, and it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> it's got cheese and sausages in it. Garlic, <laughs> cheese, chili, and sausages. Now there's a naan. Um, right. 
And how many races in GP2 did Karun Chandok win? One, two, or three? Two. Karun? Correct. Yes. Yay, good man. Woo! Oh, in 2007 at the Hockenheim in 2008, which I do believe I commentated on, it was a fine win in the wets that day. Mm. No, it's oh. right. But yes, you did commentate on it. Yeah. But I, I remember you winning. I thought it was in the wets. Right. Do you want to know the scores? <laughs> yeah. There's a slight bias <laughs> to all one person here. Uh, Simon Lazenby, a very acceptable seven. Thanks. On other occasions, good. you'd be right up there. Really? Get some button. A almost worth getting out of bed early for nine. Well done. Woo. Well done. Second. Karun Chandok, a, a, a far too good. You've just got to stop being so clever. 14, ladies and oh. gentlemen. Oh. Well done, Karun. Is that the biggest score? Is that the uh, biggest score yet? It is, it is the biggest score going into the last round, yes. Wow. The last round. Oh, God. Specialist really? subject round number two. <laughs> this time, I get to uh, offer you a selection of lasers because you're trailing slightly, you get to have one of these first. Would you like um, Ready Freddy Go, Born what? in the USA, or a Partridge in a Pear Tree? What do they entail? Well, it, that, that's, that's the name of the, the, the rounds. Is it <coughs> Born in the USA you want, Ready Freddy Go, or a Partridge in a Pear Tree? Partridge in a Pear Tree. <laughs> uh, you have to, don't you? Yeah, which is all about... Alan Partridge. Ladies. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, if I didn't tell you before we came on air, I'm telling you now for the first time, it's double points for the final oh, round. Superb. Imagine if he came from behind to win it on Partridge Facts. It'd be this is incredible. the sort of thing Bernie Eccleston dreamt about when he introduced those double points in 2014. <laughs> yeah. yeah, The long shot coming from behind to take the win. So, what are the names of Alan's children? He's got a son and a daughter. Fernando, yes, one. Do I get a point for that? You do. <coughs> oh God, what's his name called? Fernando and the girl. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> it's the bit on your legs in between the shin and the thigh. Really? Me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell her. Denise. <laughs> Denise. Get it? Denise. 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 Is it Denise? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help. That was, that was very good. Good. What was the name of Alan's TV chat show? Uh, knowing me, knowing you. Yes. With Alan Partridge. With Alan Partridge, yeah. With, it, with the signature like you do on that. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Name two, I, I, I learned from the master. Name two of the three radio stations that Alan Partridge has presented his own show on. North Norfolk Digital. Correct. Radio, is it Norfolk or Norwich? It's, um, radio, he's Radio Norfolk. Then he went to North Norfolk Digital. And then there was... Um, Watch out, Alan. <laughs> Here comes my English. <laughs> I sound like Alan, yeah. Um, we're a bit jazz on this. Jez. By the way, it wasn't Radio Norfolk. North Norfolk Digital. Nor North Norwich, Norwich. Radio Norwich. Yes. Okay. And Radio Four. Is that what you're saying? Who said yeah, it's Radio Four? You've got two out of the three. So oh, okay, fine. That's, I'll take two out of three. <clears throat> you can add Radio Four because it was on Radio Four before it was on TV, you see. Okay, fine. And um, what's the name of Alan's autobiography that we see on sale at the petrol station where Michael works? And being pulped at the end of uh, episode six, series two. <laughs> I mean, if you get this, I'm leaving. <laughs> I, know that, I know that one is Nomad. Is, is, that is, was his latest one. Yeah, but this it? is, this is in the series. Do you want a multiple choice? Yeah, yeah, I do. Is it uh, Back of the Net? No. Is it Needless to Say I Had the Last Laugh? Or is yes, it Bouncing Back? That one. It's, it's, it's Needless to Say. Oh. No, it's bouncing back, isn't it? It is bouncing oh. back. <laughs> it's bouncing back. It's bouncing back. It is bouncing, bouncing back. back. Well done. <clears throat> and <throat> finally, um, Chalet, Bangkok, Savoir Faire, Lazarus, Debonair, and Ferrari. 
are all the names of Alan's house band on Knowing Me, Knowing You. But who is the leader of the house band? Glenn Ponder. Oh. <laughs> no, Glenn Ponder is absolutely good, correct. Good, what good. a brilliant round that was. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Just for you. Puts you right into contention. Uh, Jensen, would you like Ready Freddy Go or Born in the USA? Uh, born in the USA. I wasn't, but let's do Born in the USA. Okay, so these are things or people that were born in the USA. Yeah. Okay. Classic. Is absolutely. So, um, named by advertising secretary Esther Glickstein Rose, this American was first seen in Pittsburgh in 1967, across the USA in 1968, and worldwide ever since. There are 560 million of these sold every year in the US alone. <laughs> what? I didn't hear that question. <laughs> So it Likey was trainers. It was advertising secretary <laughs> who first named it, uh, first seen in Pittsburgh in 67, across the USA from 68, worldwide ever since. We could all, we could all buy one. There, there, there are places open selling these things at the moment. Telephones. No, not telephones. Think food products. Coke, cola. It isn't, I'm afraid. Baked beans? Nope. Baked beans. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Big Mac. Oh. One is sold every. Of course, second. you have a question about the Big Mac coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually very good. That was good. But wow. First uh. is like, uh, built as a landmark for the World Fair in Chicago in 1983 to rival the Eiffel Tower that was built four years earlier. Um, the biggest example of one of these is 550 feet high. It's in Las Vegas, but what is it? What do you mean, what is it? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a building. It? Sorry? <laughs> it's a building. No, it's not a building. <laughs> a roller coaster. Oh, so close. Ferris wheel. It's a big wheel. Oh. Yeah, big wheel. Ferris wheel. Two extra feet. By George Washington Gale Ferris Jr., who had quite a big name. He told me that I would have known. <laughs> That's why I did. <laughs> <laughs> On the 15th of January, 67, the Packers beat the Chiefs in the first what? <clears throat> See, if I knew my sport, <laughs> I'm so bad with ball sport. Look at this. This is not fair. So you get two motor racing drivers who I don't believe... No, no, I can get this. I my hand up first. Oh, could you? Well, it's either... It's either baseball or it's it's football. Um. The Packers beat the Chiefs. And <laughs> well, it's in January, so baseball tends to be a summer sport. Okay, this is. I mean, this is. Just is it? Feeding, it's food feeding. Didn't you know that? <laughs> 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 Um, ice hockey. <laughs> I think we found his Achilles heel. Lasers. Well, well. It's it the first Super Bowl, Crofty. The first Super Bowl. Uh, Thank you very much. And, and finally, which of these actors was actually born in the USA? Nicole Kidman, Keith Sutherland, or Charlize Theron? One of them was born in the USA. Which one? <clears throat> I mean, it's complete guess, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to match Damon Hill. Uh, Charlie's. She's South African, she. she well, they're none of them American, are they? She is. She is South African, I'm afraid. Um, Keith Sutherland. Uh, Keith Sutherland was born in London. It was actually Nicole Kidman, that famous Australian actress, who was born in Hawaii. Yes. <clears throat> oh wow! Fun fact. Yeah, not in your best round, I'm afraid. It wasn't my best, was it? But, but hey. You know, you tried. It, it at, least, well. at least I won't make the final. <laughs> <laughs> what are we saying about these quiz? <clears throat> you definitely <throat> won't make the final. Karoon, you need one question right to tie two to win. Are you ready for this? And, and you know, we've had tiebreakers in the other two. Wait, what, what, is the, what is the round even about? It's called Ready, Freddy, Go. Oh, God. So it's about... Don't help him, then. No, it's about famous Freds, right? Okay. As in Freddy, Freddy Go. All right. What was, the name, what was the name of the band that had a hit in 1991 with I'm Too Sexy? Uh, 
it had a freight involved, presumably. Yes. <laughs> well done. I, I know this one. <laughs> 90. <clears throat> 91. Do I get a point if I get it right? I mean, I'll I'll do, I'm going to randomly say Queen. Right said Fred. Yeah. Right said Fred. So you see, the answer's got to have a Fred in it. Correct? Oh, right, okay, fine. No Queen's okay. got Freddie yeah. Mercury, but it's ready, Freddie, go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, lives in Bedrock, works for the Slate Rock and Gravel Company. This is so easy. Oh, Fred Flintstone. Fred Flintstone ties <laughs> you with Simon Lazenby. Uh, born Frederick Austerlitz. He was named as the fifth greatest male star of classic Hollywood cinema. What's he better known as? This is not so easy. Lasers knows this one. No, I don't know. Is it Fred Astaire? It's Fred Astaire. You'd expect Ginger to know that one, wouldn't you? Yeah. Me. Good one. Me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Lasers might know this one as well. Winner oh, of the Masters at Augusta in 1992. I know nothing about golf, but it's obviously Fred. Yes. <laughs> Couples? Oh, come <laughs> on. Oh, oh, oh. Someone, someone's giving you, someone, someone shouted that. That was her. So that, was one of, that was one of the producers who just said that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Fred Couples <laughs> rescues that is, the, that is the only Fred Goldfoot that I know. I, I yeah, literally yeah. couldn't name another one. Magnificent. And uh, your final question was uh, Fred Elliott, the butcher and long-running character in which UK soap opera? No idea. I, I, no idea. See? Curry. 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 Curry was the answer. Which means... The, the final scores are in. Uh, Jensen Button, a, um, an early start and an early exit with 10 points, uh, I'm afraid. Simon Lazenby, 16 points, brilliant final round, but one lucky answer got him through <laughs> and a whole lot of things he shouldn't know about Jensen Button. Your winner for this episode, Karim Chandok. Yay. I'll squeak my buzzer. <clears throat> squeak your buzzer. Uh, which means, uh, Karim, you go through to face... Martin Brundle and Craig Slater. Wow. In the final <clears throat> more round to be wow. decided. That is Can't good. wait for that. Exciting yeah. final, that one. Yeah. Again, that one. Can we all tune in for that? Simon, can I borrow your picture for good luck? If you want. I, I actually Thanks. don't. Yeah, yeah, I'll send you. Thanks. Yeah. I might actually have the picture myself and, and put it behind me in place of the artwork. Yeah, Gentlemen, you can put it next to like, It's Lights Out and Away We Go that you've got on the other wall. Yeah, I, can, I can do that as well. We for, the, for the final, we can have something special. Uh, thanks, gents, uh, for taking part. Uh, commiserations, JB. Uh, commiserations, Lasers. You did way better than the producers thought you would, so take some comfort. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, yeah. And Karun, well, the bookies were running scared, and they were right to do so. We'll see you in the final, and we'll see you for our final part when Anthony Davidson, Paul DeResta, and Johnny Herbert match up against each other to see who goes through to the grand final. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.